Alan Watt is a long-term researcher into the uh, causative forces behind major changes in historical development, and I found his research is spot on. His background is that of a uh, Renaissance man with a background in three professions, plus having various books published in religion, philosophy, poetry, mainly under pseudonyms for much of his uh, life. Uh, he has been heavily involved in the music industry, songwriter, singer, performer, involved in folk music, blues, pop, rock, even classical. Also known for his uh, session guitar work, he has played with some of the best well-known artists and groups. Born in Scotland, he watched the uh, subtleties of politics and the media as they guided the population of the U.K. covertly into the European amalgamation. He has been uh, warning the North American people for some years now that the same process of amalgamation is being carried out. With historical documentation, he shows how cultures are created and altered by those in control, also to lead the people like sheep into the next pasture, the next phase. Uh, learn the true uh, esoteric meanings of mystery religions from one who knows. And, of course, his website's cuttingthematrix.com. And he's a big part of our new film, Fall of the Republic, available on DVD at Infowars.com. And he is in the upcoming Chemtrail slash Eugenics masterpiece that I've been really making the last three years since Endgame in the background, and we've now decided to release it in October. Uh, and so he's also going to be part of that. Uh, but he is uh, with us today, and we're going to be taking your calls continually into the next hour. But, Alan, so much is going on. I want to talk to you about Tavistock Institute, one of the premier mind control organizations, how the media works, your take on the BP oil spill, the fact that they're more and more admitting the chem trailing is going on but hiding it in plain view. Uh, the fact that the police and military are waking up, how you see the system trying to keep them under their brainwashing control, what the next phase of the economic collapse is, so much to discuss today. But out of the gates, you heard me play the clip of the cops come to the house, kill the small dog. It's an act of dominance, just like naked body scanners are an act of dominance. Uh, even if the police are unconscious, this is why they've been given this training. And the, and the illustration, though, of Obama saying openly to a senator, we're using this crisis, all this crime and murder uh, that's going on uh, by contesting some of the private cartels not laundering their money through U.S. banks, knowing it would cause the crisis. We covered this five years ago. We're using that crisis to bring in our North American Union. I mean, this is an amazing admission. Alan Watt. Yeah, it's common, too, that so many of them, uh, Hillary Clinton said the same thing too a while back. We'll use this crisis. You find the members of the Council on Foreign Relations saying the same thing. Never let a good crisis go to waste because there is an agenda and the agenda must go forth uh, regardless. They will use anything at all, including, the, of course, this uh, spill in the Gulf as well. They're using that to get their sustainable development and carbon tax agendas through as well. So these guys literally um, will use every crisis that comes along. And if they can't find one, they'll make one. Yeah. Alan, uh, let's let's go into that first, because uh, I haven't talked to you in a few months uh, on air. I think I interviewed you right before the oil spill. Uh, break down... Uh, what you think is happening there and what they plan to get out of it uh, for the the viewers and listeners. Mm. Well, this new world order, in this phase what we're going through now, apart from the amalgamations of whole continents together, and remember the NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, is still rushing ahead. It, it still has to have a, one more signature put on by the president and the president and the prime ministers of Canada and Mexico, and that's uh, legally binding. Uh, that's the fifth uh, legal agreement. Uh, so that's on the go. We also have the sustainable development, which is the whole way to control the world, uh, really rushing forward. Um, in Britain, for instance, and in other countries, they've passed laws already. The, the European Union passed laws that come 2018 to 2020. All homes built must be sustainable and they're going to start finding those homes which are not uh, thermal approved and all the rest of it. And this is neo-feudalism. This is total mm -hmm. serfdom to, to literally engage in siege, as they state, to cut off our energy, our calories, so we cannot have children, and we are total creatures of the states, while the elite like Al Gore live in their giant uh, mansions and are exempt from all the rules. Absolutely. And they're using every uh, environmental reason to push it ahead. Now, they set up the carbon tax phenomenon uh, quite a few years back. They're already trading 
carbon tax. Well, look at how for 20 years in the U.S. they try to restrict farmers and ranchers from building new barns. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, supposedly if there's ever a puddle during the year, they call it a wetland. I mean, we know their intent. These are vicious, vicious criminals. Yeah, they do believe that they have the right as an elite uh, to to recreate the world in the image they, sh they say should be made in. And the democracy is too cumbersome uh, to get their agendas through, so they must destroy democracy. And they do so by bringing in new regulations, new laws, and new rules. We adapt into them step by step by uh, acquiescing to them. And uh, that becomes the new law, the new way of living. And we're doing it all the time, incrementally. And they make it uh, sexy. Uh, they finance top Hollywood people in the last decade going to these zero footprint spas and resorts, which is fine. I mean, that would be interesting, but that's to sell it to where then when you're made to do it, uh, it's okay with you. And they admit this is to destroy our society. Oh, absolutely. They've made uh, quite plain in their own writings, in their communiques with each other. We've, we've got the top environmentalists coming out now uh, saying uh, that uh, democracy has to be put on hold now uh, for the environmental crisis and for the crisis with the food shortages coming and all this kind of stuff. And by the way, they are bringing on food shortages because they have put so many farmers out of business really since World War II. That's right. Now the UN, the again to back you up, the UN who in their own State Department Memorandum 200 and their own documents in the 70s said we're going to cut off food, bring in GMOs, start wars, get people fighting with each other in different regions. Now they come out and say food prices are going to go up by 40% in the next three years. Oh my gosh, there's a huge shortage. And then they always pose as the savior for the crisis they've created. Yes, and, and they've already uh, jacked up the prices of food twice already in the last few years uh, to, to, to what it was. And uh, people don't really notice they, again, adjust incrementally step by step into this new system. And five agri-food businesses have been given the power of controlling the entire uh, food supply of the planet. So it's quite easy to bring on a crisis. It's easy to bring on rationing, which they will do, by the way as they bring us into the new system. See, we're supposed to serve the new system. As you say, it's a feudal system. Carl Quigley said that. It says it is to be a new feudal system with the CEOs being the new feudal overlords in collusion with government. And it's to be a scientifically run society, uh, not something that's debated on emotions. Uh, and that's the, 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 that is what the new world order is, basically. H.G. Wells wrote about it back in the 1920s in his own book, he called it a modern utopia. He said gradually, he says, rather than kill off all those who are unfit and uh, the ones with the lower IQs, the, the lower classes, who will no longer be required in a post-industrial society, he says we shall simply sterilize them and allow them to die off gradually, peacefully. So uh, this is the ongoing agenda. We've been going through it for over 100 years now. And people don't know that. They think they're born into a system which must be normal on the basis that it exists. But nothing is further from the truth. It's not normal. It's a planned society. Uh, we get no peace. If you notice, not one single generation has been allowed any kind of peace for an awful long time. And uh, if they're not get getting you economic wars and depressions and recessions uh, and layoffs, they're giving you actual physical wars and sometimes both combined. Uh, this is their technique, it's order out of chaos, they create the chaos and they get their way. Uh, no sooner had the Berlin Wall gone down uh, and, uh, and a few years, right away basically we've got a Gulf War one on the go as they go across there to grab all the oil. This is an ongoing war really uh, since uh, the 1990 and people don't realize that. Well, Alan... Suddenly, when you read the news, it's just everywhere. Oh, we've got to reduce the world population. We can only have one child. Suddenly, Peter Singer's in the New York Times, who calls humans a disease and a cancer, saying maybe we're the last generation. That was the headline. Maybe no children should be the law. Uh, and, it, and, and again, it's sold in M MTV and the colleges as, as cool and fun. They're selling people pure death. And there's this attitude where they train the yuppies that feel like they're part of the establishment to giggle and laugh about their enslavement, uh, believing that because they laugh and giggle about it and have smart mouth comments about it, that somehow they're part of it. 
uh, what do you call that phenomenon? Because I've always noticed it and haven't heard really anybody else talk about it. 